Hey everybody, my name is Jason Creel and you're watching A Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to go over some common warm season grass types. We're going to talk about the grass types, the pros and cons of the grass types, how to take care of the grass types, and help you identify the grass type. I talk to people all the time and they don't know what type of grass they have. So I'm going to be showing you a Zoysia, Bermuda, Centipede, and St. Augustine and we can talk about advantages and disadvantages of each of those so let's get started with that right now all right so we're walking around my own property you're going to notice grass clippings everywhere i've been mowing my lawn about every five days and this past time i had it was two weeks between mowings so when i mowed yesterday let's just say the grass was beyond needing mowing and i didn't want to cut it high i wanted to keep it as low as possible this bermuda at least and so i, I mowed it short knowing that it was going to leave clippings and possibly even some brown spots and i was okay with that because i wanted to get it back down short so let's start with bermuda grass here, let's take a, a distant view here first and this is in the morning so it's a little dew on the grass you'll be able to see my footprints here and i want to show you bermuda and this is the most common in my area show you the difference in the common bermuda versus uh, the hybrid bermuda that i'm i have is a 419 bermuda so right here i can see both now here's what happened on this yard i tried to kill off all the grass and then plug hybrid um, 419 bermuda well unfortunately i think i either didn't kill all the the common bermuda out of it or it just took a while for the the hybrid Bermuda to spread and that let some of the common Bermuda creep in. But if you can see the difference and it's, it's uh, this is just, is tighter and grows closer together and a, a little bit more narrow grass blade on this Bermuda versus this. And it may not show up exactly on the camera, but this is wider. And just to be honest, it doesn't look quite as good. So this is the common Bermuda. I tell people, you know, I get customers, I say, oh, that grows just about any cow pasture around here. And the hybrid Bermuda, you know, this is, again, the 419, it just grows much tighter. The other noticeable difference is when you let it grow longer, the common Bermuda is going to put a seed head out much quicker than the hybrid Bermuda. So it, it just looks better. And there, there's hybrid Bermuda. The 419, you have to buy it from sod it, it won't it's a, a sterile seed so you can't plant it from seed but there are hybrid varieties that you can get from seed i know that pennington puts out uh, i think there was one that's called arden uh, i can't remember the number and then there was a princess 77 or a couple of the the later ones they've had let's talk about bermuda grass just in general uh, it needs a lot of sun extremely drought tolerant spreads very fast so i put it out here on, on my property i've got several acres plenty of sunshine in most of it and plugged it and there's a lot of videos on me plugging the yard and watching it spread and you can look behind me and i've got mostly uh, filled in from plugging it last year and, and a lot of it died in the beginning because i wasn't able to keep it water but what survived this year has uh, spread very aggressively so extremely aggressive spreading grass maybe hard to keep out of your flower beds if it starts running in those and i know if you have a yard that's not bermuda and you get bermuda in there sometimes it can be a pain to get out of there so no not everybody loves bermuda but for what it does it's great it's very adaptable you can mow it very short for a putting green you can keep it long i'm mowing mine an inch and a half about every five days in the summertime trying to keep it low and tight and help it spread in some of the bare spots from when we plugged it last year. You can see how it's spreading to fill in these bald spots. And again, this has just made tons of progress this year. And I would expect in a month or so that you won't be able to see these brown spots because it's, we've had some rain. I've put a lot of fertilizer on it and it's spreading a lot. You see there where I'm trying to kill some of the grassy weeds in the yard. So this is the Bermuda. I'm gonna actually spray it with a growth regulator because it's growing really fast right now and I want to keep it short and I'm gonna spray it so I don't have to mow it quite as often. Now let's go check out some centipede grass. So as I move over here, this is actually my property even though we're right here by the road. It's early in the morning so I don't think we'll have any cars 
but you can see the centipede. Now centipede also spreads fairly quickly. Let's see if I can find some that's put out a seed head. Here's some shaggy centipede. It looks like looks like a, a seed head trying to make a seed head there, but it's been mowed recently. Now one of the advantages of centipede grass is uh, you, it is one of the easier ones to grow from seed, at least that's what I've been told. I haven't attempted that myself. Um, it is more shade tolerant than Bermuda grass, but still not as shade tolerant as Zoysia or St. Augustine. Some people refer to centipede as a lazy man's grass. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I know that if you, if you do nothing your centipede, no weed control, no fertilization, but kind of keep it on a good mowing schedule, it can look decent and has some good results. From a weed control standpoint, you want to be careful with your centipede grass. I know for us uh, dealing with centipede yards, a lot of my competitors in the business, they just don't mess with centipede yards because they can be a little bit of pain. They're more sensitive to herbicides, so you want to obviously check your label on anything you use. They do not respond well to herbicides during uh, transition periods, so especially in the spring transition. So we're extremely careful with centipede yards in March and April when they're turning green and coming out of dormancy. You can really set it back if you spray it with certain herbicides. Go lighter on your fertilizer, no more than two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet on a centipede lawn. It's not gonna be as super dark and green as you can make a Bermuda yard if you put a lot of fertilizer on it or a zoysia yard. It's gonna probably have a, a lighter color, but over fertilizing can cause some problems. If you want a grass and you, and you, I'm not saying it's a lazy man's grass, but I know that there are uh, centipede lawns. I got one picture in my mind where the guy, I'm pretty sure does virtually nothing as far as a weed control and fertilization standpoint, but he does mow it short, mows it like at one inch regularly. And that's the recommendation on centipede grass. And it looks great. I mean, you know, but he's regularly mowing. Sometimes I find people and they try to grow it out to four or five inches. That's just not ideal for centipede grass and you have a lot of weed problems. Um, so I would recommend mowing it really tight and mowing it often and making sure it's fully green before you try a bunch of herbicides. Now what we do, we do apply pre-emergent in the fall and then uh, once it's fully green in the following year, like in May, then you're a lot safer as far as applying herbicides to control your weeds in centipede grass. Sometimes it'll turn green in the spring and then you get some cool weather and it turns it brown. So I just tell people, listen, your centipede is probably not gonna be ideal in the spring. It's gonna deal with cold weather. It's gonna maybe have some weeds in it. But if I spray the weeds, a lot of times you set the centipede grass back. So you may have to live with some weeds. Again, frequent mowing will help with that as well. As I continue walking down the road here, this is Bermuda grass. And I'm gonna show you the transition where it actually starts blending into zoysia. So this is zoysia. It just, when you feel it, I know you can't feel it on the video, but it has a, a lot different texture to it. It's just, it's just thicker and a little bit stronger. I, I don't know how to say it. It's a little bit woodier, uh, grass tight. And this grass was here. You can see it's got some brown to it. This is up on the road. I don't like getting my lawnmower here. So I cut this with a string trimmer so it doesn't, look the best but this is a little bit wider blade zoysia uh, maybe a, a z52 or a Myers zoysia now, i don't know all the varieties of zoysia um, but you can see where this zoysia was was here who knows how long it's been here but it, it'll kind of grow along these trees where bermuda probably wouldn't do as well it's actually up here on this top of this hill this is, it would grow on the face of this hill this is a north facing hillside which is gonna be a challenge and it's, it's really steep. So basically I just try to keep it under control, but it would be nice if that zoysia crept down that hill and it might do so one day. It's just gonna take a while. Now you can see where this hill uh, faces, I guess that would be west and Bermuda does fine on it, but not so good on that north facing bank. Just moss and weeds basically. I understand some of you may have like bahia grass or buffalo grass or something like that i mean bahia grass i can't understand why anybody would want a lawn out of bahia grass and i know there are such things down in florida and places like that and then buffalo grass i just don't know anything about that we don't have that around here bahia grass we just normally try to kill that i've got bahia grass in this yard uh, and then you know i know how to get rid of it but i, I certainly 
wouldn't want a grass that puts out a seed head as quickly as bahia grass in my yard but you know so i'm not going to address those in this video you see here i've got the sprinkler run on it this is zorro zoysia so this is going to be a finer blade zoysia and more shade tolerant so zoysia in general is much more shade tolerant than bermuda grass now sometimes people make the mistake and says uh, oh zoysia like shade or saying i seen like shade it just means they they tolerate it better it doesn't mean they necessarily like it but it definitely tolerates it better so you can see here we got some large crepe myrtle trees it gets filtered sunlight through here and zorro zoysia is one of the most shade tolerant type varieties of zoysia grass so again i don't know all the types of zoysia this has a much finer leaf blade than the the meyer zoysia z52 or some of the other varieties typically my understanding the ones with the finer leaf blade are probably uh, a little more shade tolerant than the ones with the wider leaf blade so again this one um, supposedly only needs three to four hours of sunlight so it's it's one of the more shade tolerant varieties so that's why i went with it in this particular situation i put two pallets out this year and you know other than needing a little bit more water it's done fairly well now what to know about zoysia grass one it's, it's not as drought tolerant as bermuda grass uh, especially when it's getting established you know it's it's august and it's just been sucking the life out of this grass so you got to keep it water because it's not as established so you really you don't want your your you know if your bermuda starts to turn a little brown because it hadn't had enough water and then get a big rain it'll bounce right back zoysia doesn't bounce back nearly as quickly so you, you don't want it to start turning brown on you because it's not going to just turn green with the next rain shower and if it gets you know severely brown it can be a while before it recovers so you want to keep that in mind again it's much more shade tolerant it's, it's probably um, the best option in my area when people have bermuda grass and it gets a little shadier i said you know you can put some emerald zoysia or zorro zoysia in that area and it'll probably do much better i love zoysia grass it it's not going to do well in every area but in our area in uh, alabama it's doing very well and just looks super nice and thick the best yards that i take care of for the most part are zoysia yards it's a little more expensive to buy per pallet i pay 210 per pallet for this where i can get a pallet of bermuda for 100 bucks or 105 dollars or something like that from a sod farm different zoysia grasses will tolerate different mowing heights i mowed this a little taller yesterday i mowed it like three and a half inches because it, it I, it's still getting established i just didn't want to stress it out by cutting it really low but I, I know one of my customers recently got what's called palisade zoysia which has a real wide leaf blade and it'll tolerate being mowed down to a half inch i believe is what i read so you know, different mowing requirements um, for your different grass types all right back into some bermuda grass here you see my footprints and you see here where the Bermuda's trying to spread. What I do sometimes, we, we just cleared off tons of land and I've been plugging grass. So you see, I take a plug of Bermuda and then watch it spread. So this is still filling in. I'm hoping by, before the weather cools off, this will be all filled in. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna show you St. Augustine grass. So you can see over here, I've got just pieces of St. Augustine thrown out. Again, I, I got a lot of ground to cover and just wanting to watch it spread on its own. You can see with St. Augustine, you've got a really wide leaf blade compared with the other grass types. St. Augustine is also going to tolerate shade much better than centipede, much better than Bermuda. The issue with St. Augustine in my area, I'm in the northern part of Alabama, is we're really getting kind of toward the northernmost most limits where it will tolerate our winters. You say, oh, Jason, you're in Alabama, it's hot down there. Yeah, but I mean, we can get down to single digits in the wintertime, and if we do that, the uh, St. Augustine is not going to tolerate that very well. So that's why you see it a lot as you get to more coastal areas where they have milder winters down in Florida, St. Augustine all over the place. So it will live here. There's, uh, I have a few yards that have St. Augustine, um, but it may get beat up a little bit in the wintertime. Now on your mowing requirements for St. Augustine, you definitely don't want to mow it at a half inch. You really stress it out. So you're going to mow it kind of in that, you know, three and a half to four and a half inch range and keep it nice and long and leafy and a nice St. Augustine yard just looks beautiful now for me you may think I'm crazy because I'm kind of mixing grass types in certain situations 
I had a lot of land to cover, so I did the Bermuda where it was sunny. And then I was like, well, what can I do in the areas that are a little bit shadier? And so one part, I put the, the zoysia, and I would love to have done the whole part in zoysia, but that would have cost thousands and thousands of dollars. So I did one uh, more prominent area in zoysia, and then some of these other uh, shady areas I've done St. Augustine. Now, my concern is, what happens if the Bermuda starts bleeding over into the St. Augustine or St. Augustine starts running over to Bermuda? Well, I can keep the, the St. Augustine out of the Bermuda. If it gets in there, I can um, take care of that. Now, if the Bermuda gets into St. Augustine, uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that. But my hope is that the St. Augustine will grow nice and thick and will keep the Bermuda out. And again, I'm putting the St. Augustine in shadier areas where the Bermuda's not gonna like it as much. So I'm hoping it all look nice. I'll have to change my mowing heights but I'm just using St. Augustine in real sparing areas where I know the Bermuda won't grow and hopefully it'll fill in nicely. Again, I think it would be a, a better, easier transition if I had some nice Zorro zoysia, emerald zoysia, and then into Bermuda when it got out into the sun. But for cost purposes and for the quickness of it spreading, I went with the St. Augustine in some of these areas because zoysia, if you plug it or do like I did here and put pieces of sod out, it could take years to fill in and I'm just not that patient. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Jason Creel. There's over 500 videos on the channel, lawn care related. I'd encourage you to subscribe. Leave your questions, comments below. If you want to be kept up to date with the videos, click the subscribe button, but also click the notification bell beside the subscribe button. That will let YouTube notify you when I create new content. There's resources available for you if you're in the lawn care business over at lawncarelife.com. Thanks a lot. Talk to you guys later. Bye.